Hello, three five for six. Heavy gunfire from northeast. Can you deal with it? Over. By the time this training film was made in 1957, British forces had been a permanent presence in Germany for 12 years. They occupied vast areas of the country, operating numerous barracks, training estates and aerodromes. Many have become familiar names, others forgotten by all but those who serve there. And personnel could spend a considerable part of their career in the country. A dozen years or more was not unusual. The British Army of the Rhine came into being after the Second World War. Following Germany's defeat, the country was divided up amongst the winning Allied powers. Thus, the Russian, American, French and British zones came into being. But within a few years, the force of occupation had morphed, world dynamics changed and the East-West Cold War became the focus. For the next 40 years, Britain's role in Germany became one of preparation, being ready to take on the Soviet Union in the event of the Cold War heating up. As a result, Every Germany-based unit had to have 85% of personnel on station and ready at all times. These were huge armies that we were going to have to take on and we were inevitably going to be overwhelmed by numbers and therefore it was the amount of damage which we could do in about, let's say, a week's time to limit their advance before, and it's incredible thought now, before nuclear release, before we actually used tactical nuclear weapons. The relationship with the German people changed in the Cold War years as well. This film from 1963 called Posting Germany aimed to highlight how the British Army of the Rhine had changed from its post-war role. Listen to him. What enemy? We in Germany know only too well. Our country is divided by barbed wire and concrete. And I know of the distress of our people in East Germany. They have no choice in their way of life. As it is, we work this part in peace. And I, for one, am grateful to you. Because of you and our other NATO allies, that we here in West Germany, in all Europe, still have that choice. Aside from the very real Cold War threat at the time, the War Department was keen to emphasize to military personnel and their families that a life in Germany could be a good one, with shops and facilities on base and in neighboring towns, and increasingly as the years went by, better accommodation. Mind you, things are getting better for married blokes. When they do get a quarter, it's generally pretty good. In a modern new house or flat. The kids are all right too. Got their own schools, just as good as those back home. The laydown of British forces in Germany has constantly evolved over the last 70 years, increasingly since the fall of the Berlin Wall and end of the Cold War. They did a thumping good job in the Cold War, actually, stopping a real threat which would be much greater than anything that comes out of Iraq or Afghanistan. As British forces Germany draws to an end, large numbers of both German and British will look back with fondness on the period, a time when friendships developed out of the most unlikely of circumstances. And a fair share of Brits married their German sweethearts, forging closer bonds than ever between the two countries. Tomorrow when you go, we'll miss you. Let's hope we meet again. And now I give you a toast. The Rhine Army, allies and friends. Prost! Cheers! Prost! Prost.